Let's get salty! Everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video, and I still have access to the Theory Craft account from the event we had the other day, thanks to Blizzard. I swear I haven't whaled this much yet. I don't have all the signatures, plus I can't have all the cards yet. Anyways, regardless, today I thought we would start with what we do like every single expansion. Go over what I think the best of the best, what the best cards will be for each class and the neutrals. Uh, for the Great Dark Beyond, and then tomorrow we'll take a look at what I think the worst of the worst will be, and then we can look back later and see how horribly, horribly I'm wrong on. And of course, feel free to comment down below on what you think is the best tomorrow, what you think is the worst, and we have our giveaway going on to win these cards of two regular pre-orders, three mega bundles out of my pocket to enter the giveaway. Like and comment in the video, link down description below, the one with that thumbnail over there. Be subscribe to the channel every thousand subs we get until Tuesday. I swear it's the last time I'm moving it, but Tuesday, uh, you'll see why uh, we will add another mega bundle and we're getting close again. So keep hitting that sub button, unlock that next uh, mega bundle and make me go baroque. So we're gonna start off with Death Knight, we'll be a starship class. We're getting a triple rune card for the first time in forever. Although kind of not what people want. They want a, you know, triple blood, triple unholy. I kind of got some hopes up with that, I'm not gonna lie. But to me, the standout cards, at least early on, um, just from looking at it, playing with these cards a little bit early, I'm gonna go with the Airlock Breach. This card felt so good to play, getting two, 5-5 five, five, Undead Taunts, getting plus 10 health if you have five corpses to spend, which at you know that point in the game, not that hard and allows you to survive and get into whether it's a rainbow strategy, a double blood, a double unholy. There's a lot of flexibility with this card in your rune buildup. I could see myself definitely playing that in double blood. I will give an honorable mention though, Exarch Maladar, being able to cheat out something, but at the end of the day, it only just cheats out like the one thing and there's not something too insane, I feel like other than like Primus or a Yogg or something like that to get out really early to really abuse. You got your climatic necrotic explosion or whatever. Uh, is it CAD or NC? I think it's CAD. Regardless, uh, you can do that, which is pretty good, but usually want to save that up for a big bomb to actually kill your opponent. We'll see how it plays out, but I think it's a good card for sure. I'm going to give my vote for Airlock Breach. Probably bias. I just think the card is really rad. Uh, for Demon Hunter, they got this whole new like uh, crewmate mechanic. It's kind of sus though. I got to say, uh, I'd even, I try to get gameplay out of it for like a gameplay video this weekend of theory crafting. And the deck just did not feel all that great. The starship also, I don't think I saw a single person play it. It didn't feel that great. I'm just gonna go with uh, Zortoth Breaker of Stars. I think this card's really strong in your like vomit aggro deck kind of thing where you just dump your cards and yeah, then you play this and deal five damage to everything relatively quickly. Um, but again, it can only go into those more aggressive decks. I just think that Demon Under set in particular, not that amazing, not that incredible. And I'm not sold on their starship really taking off unless uh, we see some more developments. But yeah, I'll give it to Zortoth. Although I'm, I just, nothing really stands out to me as like really good. I mean, Warp Drive's a nutty card if the starship deck is good, right? Three mana draw two, discount two, probably be my honorable mention. But yeah, at the end of the day, Demon Hunter didn't stand out a ton. Druid Starship, I don't know, I might have a gameplay video coming up on this. It actually seemed pretty good. And you got some pretty cool cards. I saw like Dade doing stuff with like Final Frontier and getting Thaddeus and doing the whole like fire chattiest thing again. I don't think that's consistent enough. But to me, uh, the Starship stuff so seems really good. And it's all because it comes together. There's so many different pieces, but I'm gonna give it to Cosmic Phenomenon. The amount of stats that this can generate, the buffing it can generate when you double up and just flood the board can be really strong, especially when you have that starship going. There's a lot of promise for it and you could also just play this in a token deck, which can be really effective. I'll give an audible mention just to Exarch Othar because three different arcane spells minus six mana, pretty absurd. And um, the only thing I'll just say is it has to be a starship deck. The other one doesn't, but yeah, this card seems very strong too. I think Druid Starships abs absolutely have a chance to work out. Hunter's between three cards. Hunter set's really strong, even ignoring the Starship stuff. Um, this egg is absolutely busted. With Yodeler, it's so freaking good. Exarch Nial getting that one mana tracking hero power 
is incredibly strong. And then you have Rangari Scout, which is outright busted. I played a bunch of like Value Hunter. I, I kept having a full hand. You get so much value because you discover and discover and everything just like doubles. It's crazy. I'm going to go with the egg. I think the egg is just a slot into like pretty much any hunter deck. Getting that 3-5 that can attack the lowest health enemy again with Yodeler is just busted. It's super strong. And I could see this being a card that could get nerfed at some point. It's that good. But any of those three, they really stand out. Hunter's got some really good stuff. Alien Encounters is really good. It gets to zero mana really quickly. There's a lot of good stuff going on for Hunter this set. But yeah, I'll give my vote to the Extraterrestrial Egg. But it's it's really, you could give it to a lot of different cards for Hunter. Mage, I think Elemental Mage has got a shot. I don't know if it's really going to be running. Uh, I just want to look at a diamond of uh, Sarun. I don't know if it'll really be running that. It's very slow. And, you know, you have to have certain things in your deck, but it's very pretty. It's very pretty. Um, I'm going to go with Solar Flare. Zero mana deal to. And you can amplify it with spell damage. Really strong. Um, you're going to play this in any Elemental deck you play. It's just... Yeah, and it's good. Like, Elemental Mage is close. It's good. And they're getting really good tools. The other card I would mention is Blazing Accretion. Uh, Super strong. Drawing three cards. Build your deck that way. It always draws three. That's really solid. And uh, Exar Kataru also looks as a standout. But I'm going to go with Solar Flare. Mana cheat good. Damage good. That stands out, stands out to me as the best Mage card. Librams, I'm curious to see how they'll play out. They feel kind of slow. But if they're not too slow, they're insane. Uh, the amount of damage and burst you get with Libram of Divinity and like Lanessa in particular is just nutty. Um, and it really comes down to, which I'm going to give the best card to, because it's all basically Librams. I mean, Lumia seems pretty nutty too. I'm going to give it to Interstellar Star Slicer because you need to draw this early in Libram decks. It is so powerful, getting minus two mana effectively on your Librams. It enables everything. It's really darn important. But I feel like Sun Sapper, Lanessa, and Codman might be the highlight. Um, but Urel's really good, as is, I get Lumia, Libram of Faith. It's just going to be, can I get these Librams online fast enough? That's literally it. Because, yeah, again, once that gets going and you got the zero mana stuff going, it, it just snowballs so incredibly. And it really all comes down to Star Slicer, which is the most important part, I think, of the entire deck over anything else. Priest has like the saddest set. I saw one person, Zed a lot, who only plays Priest play, and he just played like um, Zarimi Priest with uh, Jernai. I'm gonna go with a Cure. I'm one of the believers of the Light Beyond that's gonna create these crazy boards and be able to generate some good stuff with some holy spells. And it doesn't require too hard to build around, but just a way to fight for the board. Um, it's got a shot, but. I guess you could maybe Toka's consistent enough to play or Ascara really pops and you could play this amazing diamond with it as well, uh, which again, I, the like the art, somebody said in my video yesterday, even if the cards all suck, the art is amazing. And yeah, I'll give my vote to Cure, but I'm not really that in love with anything going on. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to just completely deviate. Actually, they killed Overheal Priest, so I can't go with Anchorite. Anchorite would be nuts at Overheal, but the Hauler nerf just killed that deck. Yeah, I'll stick to Cure. I'll stick to Cure. But if uh, Hauler was still around, i go Anchorite, because that amount of health with, like, uh, the freaking Funnel Cakes could be insane. But I don't see that deck making a comeback just with that. Rogue has an incredible set, too. Um, we know the card that I'm going to talk about in a second here, but they have a really good set. I think the Starship stuff is really good. I'm I'm sold on it. I think it can work. Um, Tolgath was better than I thought. I already rated this an F. I think it's like C or B. Like, it's not that bad. It's fine to play. It's a decent removal option. Like, it's fine. It To me, it comes down to how will Quasar work out? Is it going to be as busted as it looked at theory crafting? Which, to be fair, was like probably 50% win rate at best because it really requires a real high roll and a slower matchup. Like, I feel like it could be bait, like it might be, or it might be utterly broken. I'm going to go with the safer thing and just go with, believe it or not, Starship Schematic getting, this is a so important for that Starship Rogue deck, which I do think is really going to be good. Being able to pick uh, the, that Starship piece from another class, particular the Spellburst one, where it deals damage, is super strong, because then you're like constantly clearing all the time, can be really valuable I'm going to go with the, the weird one mana spell. I, I feel like it. Um, you could honorable mention Eridor Skulker. Seems really strong. Of course, pressure points could enable some crazy stuff. 
and then Quasar, if that actually works out, is really, really spooky. Shaman, awesome set too. Asteroids looked really good. Um, that's mostly what you're looking at, or some degenerate murmur combo, which is certainly going to be a thing, I believe. But I'll give my vote because I really like the asteroids to the best asteroid card. Bolide Behemoth with Spellburst. This can shuffle three asteroids into your deck. Also upgrade those asteroids. It's really nasty when this gets going and you can deal incredible damage, like OTK type of damage, turn eight and nine, if you build your deck right. Like I had an elemental build, which I haven't highlighted yet, which was not amazing. It was okay. You build around this way harder, it's gonna be much better. And uh, yeah, Asteroid Shaman, I think is very legit. Also the signature, absolutely legit. So yeah, I'm gonna go with that card. It looks really good. For Warlock, I'm not sold on this demon thing. Uh, Healthstone, by the way. Hi, Wild. Are you still around? I don't know. We'll see. Um, but the Starship pieces seem all right. I feel like the demon stuff can work out, but I don't know if you're playing Archimon. I don't think I saw a single person play Starship Warlock, I have to admit. And I'm going to go with Car the Dark Star. This card is kind of sneaky. The way I'm seeing it is the way you just play a couple shadow spells, you got a 3-5, a 3-7. This card's really hard to remove, and it could kind of snowball from there, and then you can do stuff with reverberations. I, I think it might be the best Warlock card. I feel like the safer pick is just Foreboding Flame. Just getting that mass mana cheat on your demons that didn't start in your deck can be really good and just enable some pretty silly stuff. And saw a lot of it in Theory Crafting Day, and it felt really strong that I'll give it that, my vote, Foreboding Flame. I, I'll go against the Legendary. I'll just go for that simple common elemental that discounts your demon. It's sneaky, it's sneaky good. And again, it's mass mana cheat. Warrior, I don't know, man. I saw one person play Warrior, it was Mark. He played Sporable, Empress Moldara. He never played a Spore one time. It seemed pretty rough, but there are some really good Draenei cards um, that really stand out. And I'm gonna go with the one that usually enables the stuff, the card draw option. Captain's Log, draw two cards, cost one less for each Draenei you control. Very solid, get that card draw going in your Draenei deck. In particular, this card looked very strong when I was facing it. Uh, the next Draenei you play immediately attacks a random enemy. Really solid is one of the things that can really enable a ton of synergies uh, with your Draenei deck, plus it can go face, which can be incredibly valuable. But yeah, we'll give it to the zero mana card draw. And neutrals, it is tough to pick from because the neutral pool, like, I mean, just this card alone, Insane and Rogue, Insane and Shaman, it's gonna be really good. All these different little Draenei's. Um, Ethereal Oracle, I think is an incredible card. Getting spell damage plus one and drawing two cards is nuts. And it could cost zero in Rogue and all of that. That's really good. We've already seen Shafar do some pretty good work, but these are none of my picks. It's not what I'm gonna go with. I think Kill Jaden will be definitely meta in those slower decks, an ETC option, a really good card. Eridar Brute, I can absolutely see seeing play. I think Velen will pop up and be in multiple decks. I think the Exodar is one of the best cards in the entire expansion and will launch a lot of those starships to success. But my pick is the Ceaseless Expanse. 100 mana card, it gets down to zero. Depending on your deck, I had it as early as turn five and six when you're super all in. But if you're not super all in, still like turns eight, nine, 10, you just have a zero mana soul stealer that gives you a 15, 15 that you might be able to abuse. You might not, you might not need to, which is incredibly strong. And it wouldn't even surprise me if we ever, we have like the first ever 50 mana nerf or something, if it's that meta defining, but this will be an auto include, I think in a lot of decks, it's really good. And if you open the signature, it is absolutely incredible. So those are my picks for the best cards from the Great Dark Beyond. Let me know what your picks are, what you disagree with, agree with, and tune in tomorrow. We'll go over what I think the worst of the worst. What were they thinking in, you know, bad cards? Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends.